All right, let's go over exactly what I'm gonna to use to build out this live well so you guys can see exactly what I'm using. All right, this is gonna be a two pump live well. Both pumps are Tsunami 500s. This first one will be my pump in, water into the live well. I also picked up this kit right here and it comes with the intake valve right here for pumping in water. It comes with a bunch of things, some clips, a couple other adapters and actually has some holes in there as well, if you guys can see that. I did pick up some tubing and I picked up two kinds. I've got clear tubing right here, and this is all three quarter inch tubing to match the pumps that I have. So I got that and also got braided tubing, which should be stronger. It has the braid inside of the hose to prevent any kind of crimping. Both are good tubing. I'll figure out which one I'm gonna go with. So I've got my tubing, got my pumps, Bought a couple extra strainers. I know I'll need one because the kit comes with one, but I'll actually need two for this setup. I've got my through hole fitting right here, 90 degree through hole. This is three quarter inch. Everything for this live well is gonna be three quarter inch hose, tubing, pumps, and the through hole fittings. This will be for my drain out from the live well, draining water out. Any re residual water that doesn't get pumped out will be drained through this straight out the back of the boat. And saving the best for last, this is the secret sauce right here. This will serve two purposes, one to circulate water and the other to pump water out using this nozzle right here. So this is a dual function part of the live oil system right here. So pretty excited about using this. All this will make sense in the end and I will leave links in the description below to everything I'm showing you right here. So what you see here, you'll have direct access to. Now let me get you caught up to where we are right now in the build out of this live well system. I've already marked out center bench. That's my center bench line. And I've marked out the dimensions that I need to cut out on the bench to fit this right here, which will be my live well. This is a 14 gallon plastic tote, picked it up from Lowe's. This is the top, this is made by Rubbermaid. This is their commercial grade version. That's why they call it Brute. This is gonna be it. Again, 14 gallons, it's gonna be a pretty big live well for this size boat. The tote is a little bit taller than the actual bench. And if my measurements are correct, that's gonna work out to my advantage because the bench is actually the height of the tote minus this top lip right here. So this top lip is actually gonna sit on top of the bench. And I like that because that'll actually help me to frame it in and keep this live well very secure. I am gonna cut off the handles, modify this a bit so that it'll fit the way I need it to. If it all works out, this will be the perfect tote for a low 1436 John boat and others can take this and use this as well. I may end up putting the pumps inside this bench or I may put them back here. I'm gonna try to save this rear hatch to be as open as possible. That way, whoever gets this boat can decide however they wanna use it. So right now I plan to do the main cut for the bin and then do a separate cut here to be able to service the pumps. Time to get cutting and gutting, get this bench prepped for the live well tub to go in. Got a stink bug inside the bench. That is crazy. I wonder how many years he's been in there. So I'm at the point where I've done my initial cut of the foam. So what I need to do now is just cut the handles off of the live wall on both sides. All right, let's get this bin in here. All right, perfect fit. Look at that, awesome. This whole deck will be framed off of this live well. So however the height needs to be based on the live well will be the height of this rear deck and so on. After doing my initial fitting of the live well inside the rear bench, first thing I needed to do was test out the elbow through hole fitting. Using the same one inch hole saw, I created pilot holes following that with my jigsaw. The jigsaw allows me to make extremely accurate, clean and straight cuts. Then it's onto removing foam. Using a reciprocating saw made 
cuts all around the perimeter of the hatch opening and then made a crisscross cut in the center of the foam. This will allow me to remove the foam in very big chunks instead of small pieces, creating a complete mess throughout the boat. Once I pulled the foam out, I quickly realized that the aluminum underneath the bench had a lot of brown soot, a lot of just stuff on it. It's time to remove it and put a fresh coat of paint on there. To do that, grab my orbital sander. Everything came off the surface pretty easy with the sander. Then I went two rounds of cleaning with acetone, just took my time with a microfiber cloth and wiped everything down twice and vacuumed in between just to remove any kind of debris that was remaining. The only visible part of this subfloor underneath this bench will be the small access hatch for the pumps. So I made sure to give extra time and attention to that to make sure it has that professional finish. To paint it, I went with some paint I had in my garage Rust-Oleum High Performance Enamel Paint. The color I'm using right here is aluminum spray paint. So it almost matches the paint job that I did on this boat, but it has a nice shine to it and will make this hatch look really good in the end. So while this is drying, let's get on to another part of the build. So I'm gonna use the original cover for this tote to create a splash guard. So when this boat is run, it'll keep the water contained and it's not splashing outside the live well. So I'm gonna try to cut this just by hand, take my time and try to make as straight of a cut as I can. All right, that wasn't too bad. Got a couple rough spots. I'll just take my sander, probably use like a real light grit, maybe 220 grit, and just sand off, smooth out some of these rough edges. But in general, I'm really liking how this is gonna look. This is plenty enough space to drop a nice five to 10 pound bass right in the middle. So one thing I decided to do was cut out the pieces of foam I had on the sides here. After I put the live oil in, it wasn't making contact with the sides and I could see that clearly because I have this cut out now. So when I looked in there, I was like, it's not even touching the live well. It's not providing support. So let me just go ahead and take it out. After taking out the two side pieces I had in here earlier, I could see everything better and ended up recutting the foam that you're seeing down here now. And I cut pieces end to end from side to side so that I'd have a very secure fit. I'm not sure if I'm gonna add foam in here yet. I wanna get the pumps dry fit it, see how they fit in here and decide, am I gonna foam and subfloor this piece as well? Or do I need to leave it open because the pumps need that space? You see, I left a gap right there and that's to fit the 90 degree elbow for the drain out. Just dry fit it, haven't silicone anything yet. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna dry fit everything before I do final installation. So that drops in there, that will drain right out down and out the rear of the boat through the plug. In the end, I'll have a hose sticking out here, but I'll show you that when I get to that part. So now it's time to start drilling holes and getting this thing set up, the fun part. It's a long awaited part of this build. This is the first time I'm doing a live well, so I'm gonna be extra careful, don't wanna make any mistakes, especially when it comes to drilling holes in the boat. So I'm gonna start with installing the flow right nozzle, recirc and pump out aerator that's gonna be installed right up here. I'll need to mark it far enough down on the sidewall of the live well to account for the nut that locks this into place. So let me get this thing marked up, get my one inch hole drilled out and get this in there be step one. All right, we got a couple of things that came with the kit that we're gonna use right away. I will show you this while I have it in my hand. Do have the pump out through hole fitting right here. I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna use that one or another one, but got these two nuts. Just pull out the nozzle. One will go on first here, right? This is how we're gonna create the watertight seal. It's gonna push through the live well. This will be the end cap for the inside of the live well. And then this goes in here. And then this small one right here is what keeps this nozzle in place. So it won't come out when you pull it, it won't come all the way out. All right, so we got three nuts here, the two for the live well and one for the spout. What I wanna do is take one of these nuts and just line up where this is going to be mounted. Also have to make sure on the back side that, which is probably the most important side to mark, is to actually mark this from the outside because I've got the framing of the bench to consider and I can't see that from the inside of the live well. I'm gonna mark this from out here. You guys can't see it, but you get the idea. All right, let's drill it out. So that hole is in there. Let's go ahead and just give it a little dry run, make sure it fits. 
Got that head in there. Next, I'm gonna get my research pump kit. Again, guys, you don't have to buy a kit, but you know, it does come with everything. Makes life a lot easier. This will be my pump in. What I wanna do is get this guy out right here. Again, it comes with your strainer for inside the live well. Of course, you cannot connect a hose to a rib surface like this. So it comes with the adapter right off the brake, so you can connect your hose to it. So again, this is the Tsunami T500. A couple advantages of this one is the head comes off. So if you're ever in a situation, you know, your motor dies out or just have some kind of mechanical failures, whether you're on the water or back home, you don't have to replace your entire pump, meaning break your seals, both on the live well and in the boat to change out your motor. To get the motor head off, just press in this red lever right here and turn pops right off. This will still be installed on your live well. To get it back in, just do the opposite. Locks back in, done. I really like this. So I, of course, I wanna be able to install this in a place that it'll be accessible. And that's why I have this hatch cut out here. I wanna make sure that once this is in, you can get your hand around it and remove it if needed. Let's do the same thing. I'm gonna take the nut, cause it's, it's hard to gauge this without using the actual nut. Cause you can hold it up there, but you could always miscalculate where this should be. And then when you install it, this nut is not 100% flush on the sidewall of the live wall. So it's best to just go ahead and use this. At least that's what I'm thinking to mark it. I am gonna try to install this as close to the bottom as I can so that it'll pump out as much water as possible through the pump and not the drain. Just gonna install this temporarily. Now that that's dry fitted, it's time to install the pump. So what I did was just lined up the pump so that the spout will line up with where the inflow will be. If I put the pump over here, then the hose is gonna bend to be able to make it here. So bring the pump over towards the center of this opening so that the arm and the inflow of the water, the hose connection will not crimp the hose as much. At least that's the, that's the idea behind this. We'll have more of a direct natural feed to the live well. All right, I've got that pump dry fitted. Last thing I need to do is install my inlet. All right, I've got all my holes drilled out. Let's go ahead and just drop everything in one more time. All right. So I've got most of the tubing already hooked up, two pumps installed. And last step is to install my pump out. I'm gonna go with the same tubing here. The pump out will come from this part of the flow right combo. But instead of using this straight through hole fit that came with the kit, I'm gonna go with this 90 degree angle one. The reason I'm doing that is if I go with a straight through, it's gonna kink this tube and stop water flow. All right, so to take the pressure off of the hose, going with the 90 degree, I'm gonna install it right through the side of the boat. And that's just a small adjustment I'm making just based on how it's feeling, how the tubing is feeling in there, the pressure that's being placed on the tubes, because it's pretty, pretty thick tube. And you can see the walls of this tube is 1 8 inch thick on both sides. So the pro here is it's solid tube, will last a long time, it's durable. The con is you can only bend it, bend it but so much before it kinks. So just pay attention to as you're doing your live wells, um, see what pressure is being placed on the tubes in the position you're trying to put it in and also any pressure placed on the pumps as well, okay? Because as you move these tubes around, it puts pressure on the pump. So you wanna have it in its most natural position. That way you can avoid any potential leaks in the future. Now that I got everything done inside the boat, all I need to do is cut off my excess tube right here. And this is the strainer that's gonna be on the outside. So just wanna make sure I have enough remaining here after I make my cut to screw the strainer on here. So this is about quarter of an inch thick to half an inch. Just like that. A little bit of the tube sticking inside there so I have enough room to play with. 
And these strainers come dime a dozen on Amazon. If you're ever needing to replace a strainer because maybe you banged it up or whatever, it's really easy to replace and just swap it out and put another one on here. But all in all, it's a pretty low profile. It doesn't stick out the boat much. It's super convenient for where everything is located inside this hatch. So now that I got everything dry fitted, I can go ahead and do any final adjustments I need to, but most importantly, I can start applying some sealant and seal up everything. Make sure this is a completely and secure watertight live well. All right, got the boat out on the water, about to do this live oil test. First thing I wanted to do is just verify that I don't have any leaks. And that's from all the plumbing I did. Got the pump in right here, all sealed up, no leaks at all. And when, after I fill up the live well, I wanna make sure that this is watertight as well. So right now, the only thing I have hooked up to the switch panel is the live well, specifically the live well pump in, and then the, re the recirc and pump out right here on, these, on this live well timer. First things first, turn on power and inaugural button press. Let's see. This thing is strong enough, just not sure why it's not working. So I'm gonna cut the camera and try to figure it out, get back to you guys. All right, I got water flowing. There's something going on with this pump. I don't know if it's the way the hose is curved or whatever, but I gotta figure that out. So I'm pumping water in, bypassing the spout underneath and just pumping it in directly. So I gotta figure that out. Not sure why that's happening. Now let's hit the research. All right, go ahead and test the pump out. Pull on the nozzle, there it is, there it is. All right, I'm gonna switch this over to one minute on, one minute off. There you go, kicked right in after a minute. So the timer is working. Just gotta figure out why the rest is not. All right, I'm back in the lab. Let me show you one of the things I did to fix the problem. So this tube right here is a tube that pumps water into the live well. Before this tube was zigzagged. It came from the pump and then it came and turned around here and dipped down, dip up, went into the live well. That created an airlock. And what that is, is when you have any kind of twist and turn in your tube and there's air in there, it creates a lock and these pumps are not able to pump through that. So I broke out my heat gun, applied some heat, not too much heat to where I'd burn through the tube, but just enough to make the tube a lot more flexible to take away the natural curvature of the tube that created the resistance. After heating the tube, I was able to run it straight from pump to live well in one direction, removing and fixing the airlock problem. A very difficult part of this was getting this spout to turn this way instead of going straight down. So this spot right here is completely sealed in with 5200 and locked in on the inside underneath this lid. I needed to get my plumber's wrench in there and was not able to with this lid on there and it being sealed up with 5200. So I had to roll up my sleeves and start pulling everything apart. This was not an easy or happy task to take on, but it was very necessary to make this a perfect situation. So I got to removing tons of rivets all around the deck, all around the live well, and then was able to pop off the top of the live well to access the spout and then make the adjustments. After all that said and done, put everything back together again and head to the lake for test number two. Now this is where things got dicey. I went back out to the lake, did a full test, and unfortunately none of that footage 
got saved onto my SD card. I have no idea what happened, but very unfortunate that happened, nothing I could do about it. So I did my second test on the lake and I got water to go through. It pumped in, but something didn't feel right. It still wasn't pumping the amount of water with the amount of force that I expected it to pump in. So I figured at that point, I must have a problem with the actual pump. These are brand new pumps. Was not expecting this at all. So as a final test, I swapped out the pump that was over here and put it over here to pump in water and it worked flawlessly. I was able to pump full force water right into the live well. So my main problem in the end, and I say main problem because straightening the tube definitely helped, but it wasn't a complete fix because the main problem was a bad pump. So I picked up another pump to install in the boat. As a final test went back out on the lake and everything works flawlessly. I have full flow of water pumping into the live well and the pump out works as well. So I've got two fully functioning pumps. So less than anyone out there building a live well, just be really careful of how your pumps are flowing. Try not to create any airlock on your pumps and you should be fine. There you have it. Super excited about that first live well install and it works. Hope you're able to get something out of this video. Originally, this video was about 35 minutes long. I had to trim it down. So hopefully I did not leave out anything pertinent and you guys got exactly what you needed out of that, out of this video. The main purpose of these videos is to inspire people to just go out and do it. Don't forget for the products in this video, I will leave links in the description below. Also check out tbnation.net. That site is designed to provide basically a one-stop shop everything you need to diy your own boat build check out tbnation.net be sure to use our promo code bbf5 for five percent off your order i'll also leave the custom url link that's the affiliate link for tb nation that helps out our channel with every purchase in the video description below as well for your convenience with that being said it's about 40 degrees out here and it's time to get back home and finish this boat up. We appreciate all likes for this video, helps it trend on YouTube, and we truly appreciate everyone who supports this channel and follows all the journeys, all the things that we've been, all the adventures. We appreciate you. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell. We'll see you on the next video.